Good evening. 
We welcome you in Jesus' name as we come to worship our Lord and Savior here at St. John. Whether you're joining us here or if you're online, we're glad that you're joining us this evening. We come to this house to worship our Lord and Savior in this Advent season to recognize that the promises that God made in the Old Testament came true in Christ Jesus. And that's what we rejoice in as we get closer and closer to Christmas. I invite you to stand as we begin our time of worship with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this opportunity to worship you, to worship you in spirit and truth, to hear your message of love and grace and mercy for us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Prepare our hearts and minds now to worship you as we prepare for this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. We light two candles on our Advent wreath this evening. As we come to worship our Lord and Savior, we come also recognizing our need for that Savior, that we are sinful human beings. Scripture is very clear about that, that all have sinned and fall short to the glory of God. But that is why we come to a place like this, not only to hear and be diagnosed that we are sinners, but also to hear the cure, the healing that comes through Christ Jesus. So we pause for a moment of silence to reflect on our sinfulness, but also to lay that at Jesus' feet. Let's pause. In this Advent season, as we wait expectantly for Christmas, we know and can trust in God's promises. Because what he had promised of old came true in Christ Jesus as he came into this world. And so his promise is also that he forgives all of our sins. As far as the east is from the west, Christ has forgiven us. And so it's my privilege again to announce to you that all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our first hymn together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. continue now with our scripture readings. Our first one is from the Old Testament from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. 
But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness, shall rise with the healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next reading is from Romans chapter 15. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the, to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might, might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing of your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even to... Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him with the Gentiles, hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading for this evening comes from Luke chapter 21. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of the nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and of the waves, people fainting with fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out and leaf, you see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things take place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissip dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascend into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we join in our next hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here this evening be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We continue in this Advent season going through this idea of Advent Reformation. Now, I did want to make one side note here. This is not something I came up with. In fact, it actually is from a resource called the Advent Conspiracy, but I just thought conspiracy doesn't quite fit in 2020 and that we'd rather do Advent Reformation. So I just kind of renamed it, but uh, I've taken these ideas and these themes from another resource. But the idea that is going on here is how can we focus again on the true message of Christmas, that it's about Jesus, it's about the, the humbling of ourselves because we recognize that we're sinners, but God in his love and grace and mercy sends, sends Jesus into this world. And that's the thing that we rejoice about. Last week we talked about worshiping fully that we focus our attention on Jesus and give him the honor and the glory. This evening, we want to look at this next idea about spending less. And that kind of makes sense when we think about Christmas and the Christmas time because, well, sometimes it seems to get just a little bit out of control. Let me tell you what I mean here. So what do you think the average amount spent per household on Christmas was last year? Now remember, this is the average. What do you think it was? Well, I'm going to show you here. It was $1,500. Now, again, that's average. That's the middle. There's many more people that spent a lot more than that on Christmas. But I think this number is one that kind of really gets us here. What was the amount spent on the holidays last year in the United States? That's from Thanksgiving to Christmas, so it's really just a month time. Anybody have a wild guess on that? I don't mean a wild guess to go there. One trillion dollars. That's in the United States. That's not the world. That's the United States. So this idea of spending less, well, you see, there's a lot of money that's been spent on Christmas. Now, many people would say Christmas is this wonderful holiday. This is the time that we celebrate, not only celebrating Christ, but we celebrate time with our family, and all these are good things. And we can talk about that in the sense that we are spending on good things. But we know deep down in our hearts it gets a little out of control when it comes to Christmas time, and, and it probably is not really focusing on the true meaning of Christmas, but more of how can we, you know, outspend each other when it comes to Christmas. 
So spending less is what we're going to focus on this evening. But it's, it's more than just talking about, you know, not spending as much on the gifts. It's more of an attitude of the heart, just like it was when it comes to worship. Where do we put our emphasis? Where is the true glory found? Not in ourselves, but in what God has done. But when we think about money, when we think about spending, one of the most popular passages comes from Luke chapter 16. Here, Jesus is teaching these Pharisees, and the, the text says for us these are very rich Pharisees. And so he is talking to them, and he says this, No servant can t- serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And again, this is a very popular passage here where we talk about not serving both, that, that it is God that we serve, And money is not something that we serve, but it is a tool. And I think one way to look at this passage is to recognize that all that we have in those resources when it comes to money actually comes from God. And if we have that in perspective first, that this is a gift from God, then hopefully money will not take that first place. But we know in our sinful lives, it often does that. That's why Jesus has to teach this. You cannot serve both God and money. And it's very easy where those kind of creep in, where we kind of, you know, we assume that we're doing things okay, but, well, have you ever heard the old adage that look in somebody's checkbook and you see where their priorities are? Again, money can drive us maybe even in subtle ways. So spending less is a way of maybe we need to kind of rethink how we think about the resources that God gives to us. But what's interesting in this Luke chapter 16 is that We often focus on this idea that we can't serve both God and money. But then there's an interesting passage in Luke 16, verse 9. Jesus says this, And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. What is Jesus saying there? I mean, on the surface, it sounds like he says that we can buy our friends. Because he says, use that wealth to make friends. I think we have to go deeper here into what Jesus is saying. It's more than just the idea of the, who do we serve, God or money, but also to recognize that money in and of itself is not evil. It's not, you know, we don't get rid of money because you can't serve both but it is from God and a tool to be used by God. And here, he actually gives something very specific. He says, in the sense of making friends for yourselves. And even he talks about unrighteous wealth, but maybe in a way that makes that wealth righteous. Now, what does he mean by that? Does that mean we buy our influence from each other, or does it mean that we use what God has given to us to further his kingdom? You see, the priority is not how much money we have and how much we spend, but our priority is the relationships that we have. First and foremost, our relationship with God, but secondly, then our relationship with each other. Money is just a tool to be used and a good tool that God gives to us, but to be used for those relationships. So maybe instead of talking about spending less, though we all know that we probably could do that at the holiday season, maybe it's more about spending smarter. Using what we have, the resources that we have, to further God's kingdom. You know, to to, to buy those things in this season that are going to point more closely to Christ. I know some families have, have kind of taken on the tradition that instead of buying all these different presents that, well, we know that after a day or two just kind of get discarded, they weren't as great as we thought they were, But the tradition for some of these families is to buy something that will help other people. Maybe it's spending a certain amount of money for a mission so that they would have the resources they have to proclaim Christ or to to take care of people who are sick or to do things like that. And to see that as the joy of using the resources that we have to help other people. And in a sense, making friends, but in a sense, building those relationships in a good and positive way. There's nothing wrong with the latest gadgets or whatever, but how are we actually spending our lives and pointing to Christ? 
And maybe we should spend a little bit more time focusing on that. And money is a big tool that God gives to us. And so maybe we should spend smarter with the money that we have. Use it so that we can further God's kingdom. And we can get really creative with that. I mean, stop and think. In the United States alone, we spent a trillion dollars on Christmas. Can you imagine what we could do with a trillion dollars if it wasn't spent on just gifts at Christmas? There's a lot of things that we could do. And so it's more of thinking about what God has given to us and how can we use it to give him glory and to give him honor. Taking care of our families is one of the great ways that we do it. But also spreading the gospel message out into the world is another great way that we can do it. And we have been given and blessed with so much. And God gives us, in essence, also the responsibility to use it wisely. So let's think about that. How can we use it more wisely? That's kind of refocusing ourselves in this Christmas season. Instead of getting caught up in the latest thing, you know, which catalog we're going to look at, which store we're going to shop in, you know, maybe in a way that we're pausing a little bit with the shopping and not necessarily cramming in the stores may stop for a minute for us to think. How can we use these resources better? I also like this verse, and I think this is a good verse to kind of end on this evening. This is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. It says, Conduct yourselves so that they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God. And maybe that's a good way to kind of frame what we do in our everyday lives and with the resources that God gives to us. Not a matter of balancing a checkbook per se or spending less, but it's how are we conducting ourselves so that the world sees the honorable deeds that we do and gives glory to God, because ultimately that is what we want to see happen that God is given the glory, that more and more people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I mean, that's the Christmas season. Jesus came into the world for you and for me and for the whole world. May we use what he has given to us, focus our attention back on him, and then proclaim to the world that our Savior, our Emmanuel, is here. Amen. Heavenly Father, Help us in this season of Advent to conduct ourselves in a way that gives you honor and glory and to use that resources, that powerful resource you give to us of money, not to get in the way of our worship with you, but to use it to further your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the church. One uh, prayer I wanted to um, add here and some information about that too. So we want to pray for the family of Clarice Pershke, who died this last Saturday. Uh, the funeral arrangements have been made, and there will be this next Saturday at 10.30 a.m. here at St. John will be the funeral service. But we want to pray for uh, um, the family that, uh, as, as they're mourning her loss. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you hear us, that you listen to us, that you take an interest in our lives and care for us, and you invite us to come to you, to lift our very uh, prayer requests to you, our very lives before you, all that is on our hearts and minds you ask for us to share with you. So Lord, we pray now for the family of Clarice that you would comfort them as they mourn her loss. Comfort them also with the assurance to know that those who believe in you have eternal life, that death is not the end, but you have given us victory in Christ Jesus. Comfort this family as they mourn her loss now. We continue to pray for Mark and for Donald, for Wayne and for Estella, for Dennis and for Joanne and for Frank and for Janet. We pray for Rosemary and for Don, who's been recently hospitalized. We pray for Marty and for Shelley. We pray for Donald and for Danielle, for Jessica and for Carol. We pray for Matthew and we pray for Roxanne, for Luke and for Larry, for Marshall and Profe Maria. We pray for Carol and her husband, for Chris and for Gail and for Jim. Lord, for these individuals, you know their situations. and We pray that you would give them comfort and peace. Remind them always that you are there with them. Lord, we pray for peace in our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world. 
that we would find our true peace in you and wisdom in you. We also pray for those who are lost, those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, those who have not heard. Lord, use us to proclaim to this world that you are our Lord and Savior. And those who haven't heard you, those who are lost, may come to that saving faith to receive you as their Lord and Savior and to trust that you fulfill all of your promises. Thank you, Lord, in this Advent season to remind us again that you have come to us and remind us to share that with the world. What a great present you have given to us that you are our Lord and Savior. To that end, Lord, we lift all these prayer requests before you knowing and trusting that your good and gracious will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. We bring forward our offerings now that we have uh, collected, again, using God's resources to further his kingdom. I invite you to stand as we prepare to come to the Lord's table to receive his body and blood broken and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. You'll come forward and receive the container that has both the bread and the wine in it. And as you receive that blessing and take that gift that God has given to you, may it truly transform you. May it truly work in your heart and mind. So let us now prepare that heart and mind to come to this table by praying together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
invite you to stand. You will receive this great gift from God, his body and blood broken and shed for the forgiveness of your sins. May it truly sustain you. May it truly nourish you. May you go leaving this place knowing and trusting that God is always there for you. Let us pray then together the evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. We're glad that you worship with us this evening. And if you joined us online, we're glad that you were here with us as well. We continue to uh, worship on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Again, we also encourage you to stay connected with us. There are multiple ways that um, you can reach out to us if there are needs that you have through email, through our phone. Um, but we also um, keep up with information on our website or also through our email newsletter. We'll continue in our Advent Reformation uh, services where we focus in on that true message of Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Uh, one announcement for our Wednesday evenings, uh, December 23rd, we will not have a Wednesday evening service because then the next night will be Christmas Eve and the next day will be Christmas Day, which we will have services for that. Tomorrow, if you would like to come, uh, actually we would appreciate it if you would come to help us in uh, decorating for Christmas at 6.30 p.m., uh, just meet here at the church and be putting up the Christmas tree and some of the other different decorations, but that'll be 6.30 uh, p.m. tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we're going to have our quarterly voters meeting um, uh, just after our 9 o'clock worship service. Several items of agenda that we have coming up. Um, the housing allowance that we approve for the called staff every year. And then uh, we have a couple different items. We have a constitutional item, the change in uh, one piece that we got to present to you as a congregation. We'll vote on our next voters meeting, but that'll be presented to you. And a couple other projects and things that are coming up. And so, so a good informative, but also important meeting for you to come um, and be a part of. So that'll be this next Sunday, uh, the 13th, right after our nine o'clock uh, worship service. Christmas Eve. So we've tentatively planned 5 and 7 p.m. worship services. We've sent out a, um, or we have a poll online that you can uh, take and uh, kind of say which services that uh, you would like to be a part of. I'll tell you right now that 5 o'clock is leaning quite a bit to being very, very full at this point. Uh, we kind of have, it's, there's not a definitive number, but just in our mind about 100 that we can have capacity here for Christmas Eve. And we're getting close to that for the 5 p.m. of what people are saying that this is the service they're coming to. So please consider also 7 p.m. Uh, we'll have more information uh, in our uh, Friday uh, newsletter that comes out through email about all that. But, uh, but we'll have both of those services coming up on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, we have a service at 10 a.m. And um, so there are multiple services for our Christmas celebration. Any other announcements in regards to our life together? Yes, Mike. Thank you. Yes, if you haven't received your offering envelopes for, believe it or not, 2021, <laughs> you can pick those up in um, the uh, flock boxes or uh, mailboxes in the back. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated if you pick those up. Any other announcements? Okay, if not, then I invite you to stand as we uh, join in singing our final hymn this evening and wish a blessed evening to you as well.